Hello, God bless you. Welcome to the House of His Glory. I'm Pastor Deidre Campbell Jones, and I am so glad to share this time with you. I just want to welcome you, especially uh, new visitors. Um, I, if I've been praying for you and with you over uh, over Facebook, and you are joining us for the first time. Welcome, welcome. If that is you, please text the word hello to 818-873-3370 and let me know that you are visiting. Or if you are tuning in at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, at thehouseofhisglory.com forward slash live, I finally fixed the link. Then let me know in the chat window. Chat with us. Say hello. Let me know if um, if uh, you are one of the ones I've been praying with over Facebook. Um, and family, friends, visitors, partners, all the hubs in Gardena, in Torrance, in Sacramento, in Lincoln, in Rockland, in Pasadena, in Memphis, if you're tuning in, in Arkansas, if you're tuning in, just in case, and everyone here in Silmar, uh, welcome, 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 and please, 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 say hello, chat with us, and you know what, if you are tuning in on demand, uh, from the uh, the main website, thehouseofhisglory.com forward slash messages, or you are watching from the app, or you'd like to download the app, it is at iChurch for Life uh, in any app store. Or if you're watching on YouTube, please email me at contact at thehouseofhisglory.com. And if anyone would like prayer, I would be happy to pray with you as well. I've been sending audio prayers, and you can text the word prayer to 818-873-3370. You're going to have this number memorized yourself <laughs> pretty soon. All right, that's it for now. Let's go into this brief little introduction, and we'll come back with our opening prayer and we'll get this sermon, this message, this service started uh, with praise and the word that God has for us. I'll be right back. Tearing our chest, that's why we're singing it back to you For every battle you've won, for everything that you've done And everything that you're gonna do Seen too much to ever doubt it Feel so good, I wanna shout it Yeah, when I really think about it All I wanna do, all I wanna do is Glorify your name, we're gonna glorify your name That's why we
Welcome back. I almost forgot that I hadn't prayed. I felt like I was talking so long <laughs> for some reason. Um, but you know what? Let's do it right now. And let's welcome God into our spaces wherever we are and turn our hearts towards Him. All right. Father, thank you so much for this day. I thank you for everyone who is watching worshiping with us. Father, draw our hearts closer to you and draw us into fellowship with you so that through your spirit, we uh, can know that we're connected, that we're fellowshipping with one another and that we are truly fellowshipping with you, Father God. Help us to truly set this side, a t uh, set this time aside, Father, to consecrate it, to designate it as holy, to, to worship you with purpose, uh, to worship you uh, with focus that we're not easily distracted by what's going on in the room around us, that we're not choosing uh, this time to get up and walk around, but that we're truly pressing into your presence and that you, Father God, are drawing us closer to you. Open our hearts and uh, work your magic in there to soothe whatever uh, has uh, aggravated us or frustrated us or uh, just distracted us throughout the week, whatever challenges and difficulties that we may have faced, Father, uh, let us help us to lay aside those burdens that weigh us down, Father, clear our minds and our hearts if they're been problems that we've struggled with, if there's been prayers that we've prayed that we felt were not answered, Father, soothe our souls, and envelop us with your love, comfort us, and allow us to, to hear your word, and feel your presence, and know that you are with us, and, and answer uh, those prayers, and give us those solutions, and give us answers, and give us direction, and clarity, of how we deal with difficult situations and how we handle our job and how we um, raise our children and how we love our spouses. Father, help us to make uh, goodly right decisions and, uh, and to just cast all of our cares on you for we know that you care for us. And Father, if there's anyone watching or listening now who does not know Jesus as their own Lord and Savior, if there's anyone who is struggling with their relationship with you, Father, pour your love out upon them. Let them know uh, that you have a lavish, unconditional, uh, 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 tender and precious love for them that you forgive them and that you want them to be your children so that you can be their God. Let them uh, let them know through the Spirit that Jesus is Lord and that they are convinced that you raised him from the dead so that they could be forgiven. And, and, and just encourage each one to pray that prayer out loud that confesses Jesus as their Savior. And, and Father, help us to just receive this word, to truly uh, understand how to apply it to our lives, how to walk in it, how to stand in it, and how to be an example of it. And so, Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for this word. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. Thanks for, uh, for uh, tuning your heart and aligning your heart with me in that prayer because God says whenever two or three are touching as in agreeing anything, he will do it. That's what his word says. All right. So it is done and already done. So let's go into this song and, uh, and praise him for it. And I'll be right back after this song.
I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend And there is beauty in what I can understand Jesus, it's you Jesus, it's you I believe you're the wonder-working God You're the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen Too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love All the miracles we'll see You're too good to not believe Too good to not believe Too good to not can't resurrect a man with my own hands But just the mention of your name can raise the dead So, so good. So, so. 
Welcome back to today's message that God has for each of us. I don't think I mentioned it at the top of uh, service, but it is March 27th, 2022, if you are watching with us live. And this is the fourth and final message in our sermon series for March, going to the next level, standing. We are standing and talking about standing all this month. And I've been trying to describe to you this spiritual idea of standing and just really uh, show you that biblically it is a major theme for our lives. And in key stories throughout scripture, God has positioned um, individuals in a posture of standing that seems innocent enough but when you understand the definition of the word uh, standing which is histami uh, hist histami probably in Hebrew that's a Hebrew word and it means okay I'm gonna read it so I keep looking at my notes I'm gonna read exactly what this word uh, stand means in the Hebrew, it means to abide, to appoint, to continue, to establish, hold up, present, and covenant. Covenant. There is an aspect of covenant that God is displaying and portraying in his scriptures, even when he specifically uh, points out that uh, that that God uh, that Jesus is, uh, stood up when Philip was being stoned, or um, uh, you know when he talks about uh, anyone in Scripture having a specific posture of standing, he wants you to know that in that story there is an aspect of appointment, of continuing, of being established, of being held up, and specifically this idea of covenant. And we actually uh, saw a glimpse of that in last week's message when I brought up the scripture Exodus 14 and 13. And so let's look at that again right now. Exodus chapter 14 verse 13. 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. I mean, wouldn't you like to have God tell you that about some of the people in your life right now? In a sense, He is. He's giving us a promise that says when we stand, when we shift our position, when we transition and take that, that stance, that posture to stand, and we focus on, we actually look at and see uh, the salvation, the deliverance of the Lord, uh, then he's giving us a promise. It's a covenant that is going to separate us from the enemy and whatever the enemy is doing in our lives and uh, whatever he's doing through those various people in our lives. It's his covenant that um, that is what uh, is a part of his promise to us when we stand and see. We have to do both. We have to take that spiritual stance. 
We have to take uh, that that spiritual insight uh, to stand and to see. Now, for the Hebrews, it was a posture of strength and promise that was a comfort to their emotions and to their soul. They were in a very real situation with very real Egyptians and they couldn't just lay down in the wilderness and moan and groan and complain, but they needed to get up and be able to see God's making a way uh, through, uh, through the river. He's making a way for you to escape. He's making a path for you. He has a plan for you. He will deliver you. He will save you from the Egyptians. But for us, it is a spiritual stand where we're standing in him. We're standing in the spirit and we're going to see in the spirit what he's going to do for us and what we can do through him, what he wants us to do through him, or more specifically, what he doesn't want us to do. We're going to look at that in Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 17. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Now, if you know me, you know that this uh, story in Second Chronicles chapter 20 is one of my favorites. This is where Jehoshaphat goes uh, to God and he's like, uh, the enemies come against us. What do we do? He goes specifically to God. And this is one of the few instances in scripture in which uh, the enemy was coming up against uh, Israel unprovoked. And in this case, uh, his his declaration where the prophet speaks uh, to Jehoshaphat and he says, Judah and Jerusalem. And specifically for us, Judah means praise and uh, and Jerusalem is that uh, that city of peace, that uh, that house of peace peace. And so where we have praise and where we have peace is where we will be able to stand and see our salvation and we will not have to fight. It is a way to position ourselves for this promise that we will not have to fight our battles and the many battles that come against us to see the promises of God uh, come to pass in our life to stand on the word um, and and do so uh, takes uh, well and do so knowing that God's promises are going to come to pass takes faith and it's the kind of faith that's not flaky it's not waffling back and forth it's not the kind of faith that is actually more hope than actual faith no it's a kind of faith that has an assurance that cannot be shaken and to stand on the word with that kind of faith uh, means that we're going to Stand in his promises with a confidence and a boldness that that goes forward. That uh, well, I'm still I'm I'm moving into. I, it's like I'm so anxious to get into next month's message. But you know, when we're talking about moving forward, first that confidence is I'm going to stand firm. I'm going to stand confidently. I'm going to stand boldly in the midst of this situation, knowing that God is with me, that uh, that I will not have to fight in this battle because I am going to look into the spirit and, uh, and see what God is doing for me and through me. And I'm going to stand with him in his word. Um, Proverbs 22 verse 29 Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not 
stand before mean men. Now, this one is so good. The promise is so clear. And it's so applicable to our lives. Like, this, even though, you know, I'm reading it with the these and the thous that Terrence loves to, to repeat. <laughs> it's so plain for what's going on now. Look, if you are diligent in your business, if you're diligent on your job, you're going to stand before rulers, before leaders, before, uh, you know, people with the rule and authority over you, over you, and you're going to stand confidently before them. You will not have to stand before or in front of mean men. I mean, you have to work really hard to mess that up. And and it's promising us that we're not going to have to fight. We're not going to have to fight in those situations. And, you know, think about it uh, this way. Like, we fight on our jobs all the time, right? We're fighting to get ahead. We're fighting to stay afloat. Um, but the Word is telling us that if we stand on the ways of the Word, if we stand truly, confidently, and diligently in the Word and in the promises of God, uh, then uh, we're going to... Um, we're going to be delivered, we're going to be saved, we're going to be guided, and we're not going to have to fight if we stand, not against our enemies or the ways of the world, not in business, uh, not in our efforts, not on our careers, not against our bosses. He's saying, just stand. Just stand and see what God will do. It, in those situations, in those battles where he will fight for us. And there's a fight in the spirit that he is, uh, that he is warring on our behalf. And you know, that's really what spiritual warfare is all about. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. When God tells us uh, to stand against the wiles of the devil in verse 11. He follows it up in verse 12 with a description of this wrestling match that we are all currently in. And it's uh, a wrestling match that's in the spirit. It's not against flesh and blood. It's against these levels of uh, demons and devils and spiritual wickedness in high places that we need to be aware that there are spiritual for forces coming against us all the time, every time. And it's not a, a situation where we need to be afraid, where we need to be concerned, where we need to be looking under every rock for every demon and devil, but it's so that we can be aware, as scripture says, so that we can uh, not be uh, um, deceived by what the enemy is up to and so that we can be victorious. And the way we are victorious is by standing and recognizing uh, that this spiritual warfare that's going on is not in the natural uh, where we can see it, where we can feel it, and where we think it's going on. In other words, if we are, uh, if we are um, fighting our health, right, fighting our health issues, that fight is not against our health, it's against our own flesh and blood. If we're fighting uh, with our boss, uh, that's not uh, a fight that's uh, in the natural. That's, that's flesh and blood, right? If we're fighting our family, uh, contention and strife and difficulties in our family, that's flesh and blood. Even if we're fighting depression, right? We're fighting within ourselves. We're, we're fighting to uh, be heard, fighting to be confident, fighting to get ahead. That's flesh and blood as well. And 
That's not the source of those battles. It's not based on our senses, what we can see and hear and feel and taste and touch. It's all uh, in the spirit. It's all connected to the spirit. It's all happening in the spirit. And so everything that we're fighting, no matter what it is, if you're fighting bankruptcy, it starts in the spirit. If you're uh, fighting uh, with your spouse, it starts in the spirit. If you're uh, fighting with the government over taxes or whatever, it starts in the spirit. All of it is uh, our distractions, our attacks, our weapons that the enemy uses to keep us separated from God, to keep us from knowing the power and the purpose that we have in this world, to keep us thinking that we're only human and keep us from understanding that our humanity is supernatural because our humanity is supposed to look like Jesus. It's supposed to act like Jesus. It's supposed to do what Jesus did because as he is, so are we in the world. And we have weapons that are not of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 and 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. If we're actually warring in the flesh, if we're actually facing battles, and we all are facing battles, we all have various challenges we're going through, whether in our health, whether uh, in our families, whether, uh, in, and when I say our health, not just our physical health, but our mental health, uh, in our families, or on our jobs, in our careers, our purpose, our future, our finances finances, there is some kind of battlefield uh, that we are all currently on and fighting on in one way or another. And the bottom line is whatever that battle is uh, that we are fighting, currently fighting, it means that we are not standing against the wiles of the devil that we are not resisting the devil that he might flee. And I've said this before, that that scripture starts with, Submit yourselves therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The way we resist the devil is by submitting to God. So whatever that battle is, submit it to God. I mean truly, completely, 100% thoroughly submit it to God and even as I'm standing here preaching it I know that at times that is uh, harder uh, to do than it actually is for me to say it because there are things in my own life uh, that it, it's very difficult to, to completely submit that thing to God, to submit your belief that you are healed, to submit your belief that you will prosper, to submit uh, to the belief that God will provide, to submit to the belief that God can restore your marriage, to submit to the belief that your children will be all right, to submit to the belief uh, that you will be, de be delivered, that you will be saved, that you will prosper uh, and be in health even as your soul prospers. It's not always easy, but it is right. And that is where we go to the word and we hear the word and we keep hearing the word and we allow the word to help us keep hearing the word of God so that, uh, so that our faith increases by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's a, a, a warfare that starts in his his word and finishes in his word. It's a warfare that understands I've got I've got weapons uh, that I can take up. But first, we remember last week, there was armor that we had to put on. It's that uh, helmet of salvation.
regulation that protects your thoughts because uh, because um, Second Corinthians ten three and four says I mean three and five says that then we're going to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself uh, 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 against the knowledge of God. Pardon me and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, this scripture can easily and frequently does get mistaught uh, in that we have this mindset that we need to be obedient. We need to uh, keep our thoughts obedient. And we need to toe the line. And we need to do what's right. But you know, that kind of obedience, if we could do it, we wouldn't need Jesus in the first place. No, it means uh, taking those thoughts and and uh, shackling them, putting in, them in handcuffs and handcuffing them to the obedience of of Jesus Christ. Now Jesus Christ obediently went to the cross and going to that cross there was that great exchange so that everything Jesus took to the cross with him uh, he nailed it there so that we could be delivered from it. So in other words uh, those thoughts that I'm never gonna get healed of this. I've been dealing with this for six months, six years, 16 years, 60 years, however long it might be, and saying, you know what? I am going to take that thought, and I'm finally, no matter what I feel in my body, no matter what the diagnosis of the doctor says, no matter what medications I'm still taking, I am finally, once and for all, going to stand on the word of God that says, by his stripes you were healed. When were were we healed 2,000 plus years ago when Jesus took our sicknesses, our diseases, our infirmities, our pains, and our illnesses and nailed them to the cross with him. And we handcuffed those thoughts that were never going to be healed to the cross, to the obedience of Jesus Christ. And we cast down that thought uh, and we cast it underneath the truth that says we we are healed that in him there is healing amen that when we say I'm never gonna get ahead I don't know how I'm gonna pay these bills we take those thoughts and we handcuff them to the obedience of Jesus Christ uh, that is in oh I believe it's second uh, Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9 that says though he was rich uh, we, uh, he became poor for our sakes that through him we might be made rich. No matter what it is that you are battling, there is a word of scripture for it that comes with promise. So that when we stand on that promise, we are taking a hold of that promise and we're standing in covenant with his word. And so the weapons are of our warfare are the ability to cast down those imaginations and shackle them, handcuff them to the obedience of Jesus Christ and letting Jesus do the rest so that we can rest in him, so that we can cast our cares upon him, so that we can stand confidently in the knowledge that he's got our backs, that he's going to lead us, that he's going to guide us, that he's going to help us, that he's going to protect us that he's going to heal us, that he's going to prosper us, that he's going to deliver us. And through our salvation, we are saved from whatever the enemy uh, attacks us with, from whatever weapons he forms against us, they will not prosper. Amen. We can stand, stand boldly, stand firmly, stand confidently in the knowledge and in the covenant of of his word we are stronger than we think we are more capable than we know we are and way 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 more cooler in jesus than we can possibly be on our own it is time to know this word so that we can stand on the promises of this word. Amen. It's time to see these promises come to fruition in our lives. So arise, 
shift your position, make up your mind and stand. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord and you will not have to fight. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Woo! That is the word for this month. And so now that we have stood, we're going to go forth and walk it out in him. Amen. Let's go into this song of worship and I will be back with partnership and prayer. Thank you for joining me back uh, for this time of partnership. This is when I open the doors of the church, so to speak, and invite you in, invite you to partner 
with this congregation. It's not a matter of coming into this building. It's not a matter of uh, joining this organization we call church. It's a matter of partnering with this ministry and with this word so that we can all learn how to be the church together. Amen. And so if you would like to partner with what God is doing in this ministry and through uh, this congregation, you can either go to the website, to the contact page, and click the link that says join the congregation, or you can text the word join to 818-873-3370. And if you would like to partner with this message and you would like to be built up through this word today, you can do so by uh, bringing an offering into this uh, congregation. In fact, Jesus, or God said uh, that through those offerings, he will build up the congregation. And so whatever you bring uh, into this ministry as an offering, God uses it as a sign of trust and a vehicle through which he will pour into you, bless you, and build you up. Amen. And if you have a need in your life, uh, you can sow a financial seed towards that. Name it in the little description box and I will pray with you over it. I am praying with you, uh, praying in agreement with you and, uh, and, and trusting that God is going to work that situation out through your faith to sow a seed towards that need. Amen. And so however you give at this time, the link above the, the logo in the chat box or any of the giving links on the website or the app, however you give, I thank you for your giving. In fact, in Bible study on Friday, we covered uh, the promise of God where he says, in blessing, I will bless you. And so you are blessing this ministry and God is blessing you in return. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You will see it's coming back to you. Amen. And so God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your giving, whether it's financial, through your prayers, your love, your support, your encouragement. I know it's all coming back to you. Amen. Let's go into this final closing prayer. Amen, amen, and God bless you. Thank you once again for sharing this time with me, whether it's uh, Sunday morning or any other time. Uh, I'm just so blessed that uh, you choose to worship with us here at the House of His Glory. And um, so I just want to pray over you and seal this word upon your life. Amen. Father God, thank you uh, for this word. Thank you that you want us to stand confidently as your children, uh, uh, as your people, to stand in the knowledge of who we are, to stand in the knowledge of uh, what you've purposed us to do, and to stand in the knowledge of what you have given us through Jesus Christ. That we are not just merely human, but uh, that we are anointed, we are blessed, we are purposed, we are called, we are chosen, and we are forgiven and adored. Father, we love you so much and we thank you uh, that we are able to love you because if it were not for your love for us, we could not love you. We thank you for forgiving us. We thank you that you desire to be with us, to just uh, live our lives with us and through us. We thank you for purpose. We thank you for healing. We thank you for clarity and peace of mind. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are squashing all fears, that you are giving us peace and letting us know that you have not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and it's through that sound mind that we will prosper and be 
in health. And so we thank you for healing our bodies right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your glory that surrounds us and protects us, guides us and delivers us and works supernaturally through us. Father, we thank you for giving us a word, a hope, and a prayer that will be a blessing to someone else's life. Father, we thank you for uh, teaching us how to walk in your ways and how to be an example of your word. We just love you and we thank you for the covenant of your promise. Uh, the promise that you gave to Abraham is now being fulfilled in us and through us. Father, we just love you so much. We praise your name. You are mighty, you are holy, you are righteous, you are glorious, you are gracious, you are pure, and you are true. We thank you. We thank you for being who you are in our lives, for being a good, good father. We just pray this prayer in the mighty, matchless, perfect name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. And I, I do also want to mention that if at any time uh, during this message you prayed the prayer of salvation where you felt led to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please text the word SAVED to 818-873-3370. I have a what's next welcome gift to email to you. All right. God bless you all. Thank you for spending this time with me today. I love you. And you know what? I'll see you next month. It, next week is next month. It's April and Easter is coming. Uh, we're going to have um, another special Easter presentation. And, and so stay tuned. Pay attention to your emails and to your texts uh, for how we can uh, share Easter uh, Resurrection Sunday together and how you can invite someone to share it with us as well. All right, that's it. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.